now a civil society organization Food Sovereignty Ghana has called on Ghanaians to reject the second, the recent approval of 14 genetically modified organisms by the National Bank Safety Authority. According to them, the GMOs are likely to cause potential health risk, environmental impact and economic harm to Ghanaian farmers. The Ghana National Bank Safety Authority approved the commercialization of 14 novel genetically modified products comprising eight maize and six soybean products. The decision was aimed to mark a significant milestone in the country's strategic utilization of biotechnology to enhance its agricultural sector, catering for local food demands, nutrition requirements, and potential exports. However, some civil society organizations have kicked against the proposal. They argue that the approval of these genetically modified products will pose potential health risk and economic harm to Ghanaian farmers. FSG and our allies are concerned about the quantum, quality and lack of risk assessment and risk management of the BT cowpea by the relevant stakeholders before such approvals are endorsed as safe for our health and the environment. Thousands of Ghanaian farmers who grow the organic version of the soya bean will be rendered jobless if this proposed release of the GM soya bean goes ahead. The socio-economic implications for the welfare of these farmers, their households and their local communities will be incalculable. Communications Director of Food Sovereignty Ghana, Edwin Kweku and Obafor called for a nationwide sensitization on the matter. The present problems affecting agriculture, they've totally turned a blind eye to and if they look at that, there's no way Ghana will be doing GMO. So the National Biosafety Authority rather should be educating Ghanaians about what they're doing almost undercover. We've called for, 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 for those who profess GMO to come and answer to us. We've had private debates. They can never survive when there are Ghanaians there to listen to what they say. But somehow they run back and you can see that they are answerable to people outside. Ni Anyate from the Economic Fighters League called on the government to support farmers instead of rushing to adopt GMOs. We in Ghana can be fully sustainable. We have land in abundance and none of the scarcity dis disturbing Europe and their own food sovereignty. All our farmers demand is infrastructural support to fully sustain we Ghanaians, their fellow Ghanaians, and keep us all healthy. But instead, they are by extension, and, and us also by extension, are being offered only genetic manipulation lobbied for by European companies that are even selling things that are banned in their own. All right, so join us on Zoom on this particular issue. We're going to be speaking to um, our guests who will be joining us very soon from the civil society organizations who have rejected the, this recent approval of the 14 GMOs. And uh, we've got Suleimana Isifu, Director of Research at the Center for Climate Change and Food Security, on the line. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Now, how concerned should we be about these GMOs? If you could kindly unmute yourself so we can hear you, we're not hearing what you're saying. Can you hear me? Great, it's, it's better now. So you can go on. How concerned should we be? Right. Okay, so GMOs are still contentious. It's a contentious issue across the globe and across the world. And there are many countries that are still struggling to come to terms with the necessity of transitioning to GMOs. And so even advanced countries in Europe and whatnot are not readily opening up to GM because um, the effects of GMs are not fully known. So whatever we are doing now um, or whatever the corporations are pushing on countries like Ghana, the assessments that have been done could at best be described as preliminary assessments. And usually when you have to deal with the adoption of a technology. The most important principle to stick by is what we refer to as the precautionary principle. And this principle simply says that you should be careful when you are adopting a technology whose effect has not been fully assessed. And if I take you back into history, the reason why the world today is struggling to or grappling with agricultural productivity, with the myriad problems that are facing agriculture, including for example, 
uh, the issues of pest and all of that. It is because during the Green Revolution after the Second World War, um, there was massive transition of agriculture across the world to technologies whose effects were not readily known at the time. And because of this, um, the crops today are struggling to adapt. The crops that were at the time adopted in, in, the, in the name of Green Revolution, in the name of feeding the world, those crops are today struggling to adapt to the harsh and the vigorous of the weather um, conditions across the world. And that is why food production is very steady and unstable. Okay. So this means that whenever a human, whenever humans try to solve problems by manipulating nature, there are always consequences. But when you are dealing with corporations whose interest is to push their agenda and to make profit, you, the regulatory authority, you have to be extra careful because these corporations are not in because they love the world and they want to uh, give the world bumper harvest and to solve the problems of anger. Their interest is profit. So when you're dealing with a, an organization or a corporation whose interest is profit, then you have to be extra careful. And we are surprised that the National Biosafety Authority, instead of policing and protecting, becoming the sentinel, the shield, for protecting Ghana against invasive species. I call these crops invasive species. They have rather facilitated the quick transitioning of Ghana to GM. It appears their only interest is to help Ghana to transition to GMs. And it, I shudder the Center for Climate Change and other um, similar organizations, we shudder to think why the NBA is only interested in transitioning to GMs when there are myriad of problems associated with our agriculture that has nothing to do with um, bumper harvest and all of that. And in any case, GMs, the promises that GMs give, they never achieve them. There are many GM crops that um, we, we were promised that, oh, these crops are going to be resistant to pests. These crops are going to be uh, producing bumper harvest and all of that. And at the end of the day, those promises were not met. It tells you GMs are not the uh, solution. The world was promised the same thing during the Green Revolution. Today, we are still reeling from the consequences of the Green Revolution. Okay. So we cannot accept another revolution, another Green Revolution in our agricultural space. And knowing that the GM uh, crops that have been granted environmental license for release, knowing that the NBA itself did not do the assessment, this is a very important point that I want Ghanaians to know. The NBA itself did not do the assessment. The data on which the NBA based its assessment or its approval on were data that were provided by the applicants themselves in accordance with so-called Katagina Conference or Katagina Protocols. Okay. So we are saying that the NBA, to be sure that the, these crops have no environmental consequences as well as health concerns, we would rather that the NBA itself goes into um, the assessments by doing all the biological studies that they need to be before and then pro providing us with the data that they themselves gathered before we can now think of whether to support or not to support. Okay. But to base your approval on data provided by applicants whose interest is to make profit and not necessarily to solve the problems of agriculture in Ghana, that is really, really uncalled for. And we are shocked that the NBA has constituted itself into a facilitator rather than a police that is supposed to protect Ghana, our agricultural system from invasion of GMs. Okay. Suleimana, thank you very much for your time this afternoon.